Hello, everyone, and welcome again to Unfound Now, this monthly series that I've been doing since the summer of 2020. And for this month, I'm going to be talking about the November 3rd, 2023 disappearance of Tyler Goodrich. And I have to thank a viewer and listener, Charlotte, who brought Tyler's disappearance uh disappearance to my attention, uh, wondering if he would make a good uh, candidate for an Unfound Now episode. And I said, well, Charlotte, certainly he would. And so that is why I am making Tyler March of 2024's uh, topic. And Tyler is still missing. Uh, this is a little uh, older, a bit older of a disappearance than we usually do on Unfound Now. Usually it's Maybe just a couple months old, but we're going way back uh, to about four and a half months ago. And very sadly, Tyler is still missing. Before I go any further, I hope you will give this video a thumbs up. And uh, if you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please consider doing so. Please consider supporting Unfound's content by hitting the join button below or going to patreon.com forward slash unfound podcast or paypal.me forward slash unfound podcast. So Tyler Goodrich, uh, he's from Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, when I think of Lincoln, Nebraska, I think of the disappearance of Regina Marie Boss, a uh, woman who went missing um, back in, I think, in the year 2000. And very early on in Unfound's existence, we covered her disappearance. Her sister, Janelle, was the guest, and very sadly, uh, Regina is still missing. Tyler went missing during the night of November 3rd of 2023. He is 35 years old. He is a white male. He's a gay male, and he is married, and he and his husband have two children. On each of these Unfound Now episodes, I'd like to remind everybody why uh, this series exists. Uh, three mainly three reasons. First of all, education. I'm all about education. I like to learn about disappearances. I like to teach people about disappearances, and I think uh, that uh, using the series, I've been able to educate a lot of people on disappearances. Of course, publicity. Unfound uh, the podcast is of course very popular. This Unfound channel kind of popular, not as popular as the audio podcast that comes out uh, every Friday, but we do. Okay here. So talking about Tyler and all these other disappearances that we've uh, featured on Unfound now, this monthly series, I think that it's really raised the profile of all of them. And, and many of them have eventually been uh, solved. And then insight. Uh, maybe I, as the host, as the experienced person, as the professional, maybe I see some things uh, that other people don't. And I try to pass that on to all of you. Um, and one more thing. Uh, once in a while, I just have to bring it up. I do get a comment. Once in a while, I get a comment on some of these videos. Well, you don't know what you're talking about. And I think this is generally like the um, like the facts uh, that are presented in each Unfound Now. And two, then I respond. I, I say... I'm just going by published reports. On none of these unfound nows do I have any secret information or anything like that. I'm just using what has been published locally, for example, here in Lincoln, Nebraska, about Tyler's disappearance. If those facts are wrong, then I would go and send emails and post comments on their websites. Don't post them in the comments for these videos because I'm doing analysis like I said, education, publicity. This is unlike the podcast that comes out every Friday where certainly it is news, where we are presenting facts, presenting new facts to the listeners. This is not the situation with Unfound Now where I'm just looking at news reports and trying to read between the lines for all of you. As with every Unfound Now episode since the beginning, I bring some learning points, uh, things I think that uh, we can learn from each of these disappearances uh, in the hopes that we can all become better educated on disappearances, thus making them more likely to be solved 
And the three learning points for Tyler's disappearance. Uh, number one, a relationship reminder. Number two, the running type. And number three, on that topic of education, we have a lot to learn. Of course, since this has been four and a half months since Tyler went missing, there are a lot of articles uh, that have been written about his disappearance. Uh, I just picked out one. I could have probably spent uh, an hour reading different articles, but I just picked out one that I think gives a good general overview uh, of what happened back on November 3rd of 2023. And I'm also going to do uh, a, a little bit of uh, map analysis during this video after I read this upcoming article. And then we'll get back to those learning points. We'll go into those much more in depth. So here is the article. Uh, private investigators are conducting new drone searches in Lincoln, Nebraska for a missing husband and father who vanished in November. But friends and family are losing hope as the search for answers continues. Uh, this, by the way, is an article that just came out within the last couple of weeks. Goodrich's case has sparked the interest of more than 23,000 people in the community and online. His friends say he gathered people from all different groups as friends from work, his running group, the military – the LGBTQ community and lifelong friends, but those friends still have no answers as to what happened to the husband and father of two teenagers. So although he was just 35, uh, the two children that he and his husband adopted um, are already teenagers. So here are the general facts. On November 3rd, 2023, Tyler Goodrich went to work at his job at the Nebraska Department of Corrections and stopped at Costco after work to pick up a pizza for family movie night with his husband, Marshall Vogel, and their two children. But shortly after he got home, he and Vogel got into a heated argument, private investigator Eric Rezebeck said. This was documented by Marshall. They were planning on getting divorced, and I think that is probably what escalated this argument to a whole other level this night, Rezebeck said. Um, is Rezebeck working for one of the families involved in this? I don't know. Vogel told Rezebeck he called 911 after Goodrich pushed him. Vogel said Goodrich ran upstairs and then ran out of the house, his cell phone going silent shortly after he left. Security cam footage from outside Goodrich's house showed grainy vo vo footage of a man running in front of the home. But was it Goodrich? Rachel Barth, one of Goodrich's friends, said there is a disagreement about, uh, among family and friends. Now, first, you should know that of uh, they got into this argument allegedly – Tyler pushed Marshall, and that's when Marshall called 911. This 911 was, a call was recorded, and you can hear both of their voices in this call. Police eventually did show up, but it was in that span between the 911 call being made and the police showing up that Tyler allegedly ran off. Now, as far as this video, I'm not going to be able to post it within this video because there's, uh, of course, copyright claims, etc. But I've watched the video. It doesn't show much. Uh, of course, as you just heard, this uh, one of Tyler's friends, Rachel, says that it's really a big question whether that is uh, Tyler or not. I, I don't know what to really make of it. But I will come back to that. A little later, but I have seen the video and I just want to add a couple more facts uh, that are left out of this particular article. Like I said, there's no perfect article um, <clears throat> regarding this disappearance because so many have been written and each kind of come from it uh, to it from a different angle. We have this really, really grainy video of somebody leaving the house. I've seen it personally. Bar said I thought it was Tyler, but other people don't think it is. It's really hard to tell. Like I said, it could be it could be me running in that video. At first, friends and family thought Goodrich might have gone on, on a run to cool off. The 35-year-old runner was training for a race that weekend. I talked to him every single day. I saw him every day at work, said Goodrich's co-worker, Daniel Reynolds. When that weekend happened, once it was over, I got up the next day expecting that I would see Tyler walk into my office or hoping that it would happen, so it's just been difficult. In the early days of the investigation, police urged, police urged Goodrich to come back, hoping he had just run off after the argument. Chief Deputy Ben Houchin with the Lancaster Sheriff's Department said they wanted to be clear Goodrich wasn't facing any legal trouble. 
We just want everyone to know he's not in trouble criminally whatsoever for anything that has transpired. So if he is in hiding and thinking he's in trouble, he can come out and not be. He also still has his job. We just want to make that clear. Initially, police said Vogel hadn't been cooperating, but later retracted the statement, according to local news reports. Vogel told local media that authorities had searched the couple's home multiple times over the course of the investigation. Private investigators have continued to continued to conduct searches over the area. A canine search about three weeks after Goodrich disappeared revealed a path he may have taken after leaving the house. That path took them along a wooded area, ending up along a road. But as days turned to weeks and months, family, friends, and investigators fear something more sinister happened. Reza Beck, the private investigator, has some theories of what might have transpired. Tyler went on that run. He heads toward the house to kind of fix things and either A, a drunk driver, or B, somebody who wouldn't have been on the road to hit him, gravely wounded him, and then panicked and left the area, Reza Beck suggested. I'll come back to this. That theory was also sent in a tip letter to investigators sent from a woman who claimed to have had a vision of what happened to Goodrich. All of you by this time know what I think of people who have visions. After police spoke to her, they said the letter did not produce any new leads. Angie Manley, Goodrich's sister, said there's been no trace of activity from Goodrich since that night. Tyler just disappeared. There's no bank account activity, no cell phone activity. We want someone to come forward, speak up, be honest. Something has happened, and we want closure for the family right now. Goodrich's friends, old or new, remember the impact he's had on their lives. We were both uh, even homecoming king and queen. You know, the crown bearers that give that to the high school senior king and queen of the class, Barth said. Those friends just want to know what happened and hopefully see Goodrich again. I just want him to come back, Reynolds said. If you have information that could help the search for Tyler Goodrich, please contact the Lancaster. Caster County Sheriff's Department in Lincoln Department in Lincoln, Nebraska at 402-441-6500. And that is one particular article that has been written about Tyler's disappearance. It's fairly recent. You, of course, can find articles going back right to right after he disappeared that have been written. I just picked out one. There have been many. I'm now going to go to the map. I think it will be helpful for everybody to see uh, the area where Marshall and their children and Tyler were living and try to get an idea of what direction, uh, if it was Tyler, if it were Tyler, in the video, which way he was uh, running and looking at the surrounding area. Also going to talk a little bit about the weather that night, which may be relevant to all this, and then I will get into those three learning points that I mentioned at the beginning. Okay, the video for the disappearance of Tyler Goodrich. Uh, we are looking, of course, the satellite photo uh, overlooking the address where Tyler and Marshall lived with their kids. And so I'm going to first zoom out a little bit and so what you'll see here is not there is a little bit right here there's some sort of uh little river uh, branch it's not even called a river it's the Haynes branch uh of a river and and I will tell you that this does not look like uh, some sort of body that would uh, could sweep uh, away uh, an adult uh, human. So I'm not considering this, that to be really a body of water. So in, in my opinion, not really any bodies of water that should concern us in the area from where uh, Tyler disappeared. Now, I also look at this park, uh, what's it called, Wilderness Park. It's, I guess, it's to the west, kind of west-northwest, this area over here. It's not that far away, maybe at least to this, the closest part of it. The nearest part, maybe, what, 3,000 feet, maybe two-thirds of a mile, something like that. Right here might be a good area to search. I'm going to just take for granted that they've already done at least a little bit of that. But uh, that would be an area where I think you'd want to search over and over and over. 
Now, what's really hard to tell here, zooming in on their house, is they kind of, I, uh, me being a city person, I would I almost want to call this a farm, but not quite. But they did have uh, animals other than dogs and cats. And so we need to keep that in mind. The problem is that it seems there's at least a little bit of discrepancy. I don't think this is any big deal necessarily. I don't see, think anything suspicious about this. But it was somewhat unclear to me, this video that is shown is, is Tyler, and I want you to know, I do believe it's Tyler in the video. Was he running out the back or was he running out the front? This is the house right here. Was he running this way or was he running this way? A couple different stories. Uh, there's a little bit of a conflict there. What makes most sense to me, given this is some sort of... Um, camera on a, uh, a doorbell, one of those ring apps or something like this, it would make sense to me that the this was on the front of the house over here on the southern side of the house, but maybe not. Maybe it was on the back side of the house. Maybe they were using it as a security camera or something. So I'm just not clear on that. Um... My impression is that certainly it seems like it would be easier to run off this way south then go back, then run out the back, and you got these bushes. Of course, you got <clears throat> this house over here, and there was an article that stated they did look for other videos, maybe from other homes and businesses in the area, saw nothing. The only thing that was shown is uh, this video of who I believe to be Tyler running off, and that was a camera that is on the property and, and running a, a particular way. Now, what's interesting to me, I didn't know Tyler or, or anything, but it says he was an experienced runner. And usually if you're an experienced runner, you have pretty good form. What stuck out to me in the video is that the person seemed to be kind of tiptoeing it. Was he, was he running in his bare feet? I think that's uh, something else that, uh, maybe thought about the big issue there would be given that the weather this night was 46 degrees. If you're not wearing shoes, even if they're just flip flops, if you're really putting your bare feet on the ground, that's a very easy way to lose body heat very, very fast. Putting your feet on that cold ground and maybe stopping, maybe you're out of breath, you're stopping. Your feet are right on the ground. And we know how cold our feet can get. Uh, being that I've been up here seeing my father for like three weeks. And he just lives in a one floor home. And the slab is right on the ground. This floor gets really cold even inside when where there's heat. Your, your bare feet can get cold. That's why I bring my slippers with me. So I'm thinking about Tyler. If he, if he was out there, if he were out there uh, in his bare feet. It's really a good, bad, but better, depending on how you look at it. Uh, let's just say a bad way, a horrible way, a very easy way to lose body heat. And so then we have to start thinking, no, well, he's in his shirt, he's in shorts, maybe bare feet. And then we have to start considering hypothermia. And the thing about hypothermia is before it kills you, People start to make a lot of weird decisions. Their brains start to you do the opposite of what you would think you would do if you've ever read about that, that uh, people, when they get hypothermia real bad, they actually start taking their clothes off, not keeping them on. It's it's very bizarre. So he ran off. I, I realize, though, that there's some people believe that it was not Tyler. That seems like a stretch to me. So this is, this is the area, 46 degrees, although it wasn't raining or anything. I think it is the kind of weather that we must consider hypothermia possibilities. Just as I get into in the learning points, how does a person go missing in this area where it doesn't seem like you'd be able to go missing? I have to be open to the idea maybe this is something like Daniel Villarreal or like Bo Man, where these missing men who ended up being deceased, bodies were in places that maybe you just wouldn't, you surely would not expect. Maybe we have to be open uh, to that idea with Tyler. I don't want him to be dead, 
We also have to admit it's been four and a half months. Not a guy who's used to living on the streets. Was not prepared for the elements. Uh, these things start to add up. But that's that's the way I look at this area. It's tough. There's no easy answer here because there's not the Mississippi River there or there's this huge wilderness that goes for hundreds of square miles or, or anything like that. And I think, unfortunately, what happens sometimes, this gives a perception, oh, we're just going to give it to find There really isn't any place that he could hide. Then you go out there, can't find him. It's like, oh, something mysterious must have happened. Well, I get into that in my... Uh, analysis. But there you go. That is where Tyler and Marshall and their kids were living. And I happen to believe that Tyler really did run off uh, never to return. Let's get to those learning points now. Okay, I'm back. Uh, once again, please give this video a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing to this channel. Please hit the alarm button so you know when videos such as this one are posted you'll know right away and if you'd like to support the content that we provide here at unfound whether these unfound now videos or the podcast that come out every friday or the map of it videos that i do for the podcast the live show everything else please hit the join button below uh, you really uh, help us out there or you can join at patreon.com forward slash unfound podcast or at paypal.me forward slash Unfound podcast. Number one, a relationship reminder. If you're all new to me and to Unfound, there uh, has been a saying that I've coined. It's been some years now, maybe five years or something like that. Uh, relationships are the number one cause of disappearances. That does not necessarily mean for example, uh, that a husband killed his husband or a husband killed his wife or a wife killed her husband. It doesn't necessarily mean necessarily foul play. What it means is that relationships are usually the, the topic that most likely leads to disappearances. So it could very well could be foul play. It could be suicide. It could be somebody disappearing because somebody doesn't want to be married anymore. A lot of different theories can go with uh, under the umbrella of relationships are the number one cause of disappearances. So thinking about that and looking what was going on with Marshall and Tyler, I, of course, just read one article, but there are multiple articles say that they were having uh, marriage problems. Why? I don't know. And... I don't know if that's even really that important to analyzing Tyler's disappearance, but something was going on. My perception, given what transpired that particular night, is that Marshall was seemed my impression wanted the divorce and Tyler did not. It seemed to me that you know Tyler's the one stopping to get pizza and they're going to have a night. Uh, all have a nice night together, but then if we're to believe Marshall, Marshall's the one who called 911. And I think in those types of situations, the person who uh, is calling 911 probably is the person who wants to be more divorced than the other person. That is my perception, and I don't think whether you've heterosexual, homosexual relationships, whatever kind of relationship, I think that still makes a lot of sense. You also have to remember uh, if it's true that this 911 call was caused by a push. Tyler allegedly pushed Marshall. And we have to put ourselves in the moment of this disappearance. We can't really look at it. I'm doing this recording on March 25th of 2024. We can't look at it from this point of view, uh, you know, in the future, we have to be there at the time. And we have to believe that Tyler knew as soon as 911 got called, the police were going to show up. And being that he is the one who ran off, I realized there are some suspicions. Well, are we sure that's Tyler? Well, 
what kind of time we the, the, there's just too tight of a timeline here to think that there was some sort of cover up or something my impression that's the way I look at it so we have to get into Tyler's mind I don't think it's crazy to think that Tyler thought I just pushed Marshall he's calling 911 the cops are going to show up and I might be going to jail I don't think that I'm not saying that that's necessarily would have ha- what would have happened but maybe Tyler wanted to get out of there before that could ever happen. And I realize what the police are saying now, saying now well, he's not in trouble and everything else. Well, that's four and a half months down, down the road. I got to believe that had police officers, and they did show up that night, that Tyler was probably going to go to jail. Now the charges might have been dropped. It might have been a misdemeanor or something. But surely something involving Tyler leaving the house probably would have happened. And being that they were going to get divorced to extrapolate this out a little further, we at least have to think about the idea that this might have played a huge role somewhere down the road when it came to their divorce and who was going to get child custody. And Marshall was going to be able to say, I had to call 911 on him, and so I deserve custody. I got to believe, and I'm looking at, I'm a straight guy, so I can't help but looking at this from a straight guy point of view, a heterosexual point of view, and knowing how these things usually work in divorces between men and women, this is usually how it goes. If the man is abusive, the woman is going to get the kids. Likewise, if the woman's abusive or she has drugs, pro- drug problems or something, the guy's going to get the kids. Primary custody. I got to believe that that was going through Tyler's mind that night when this all started to go on. And he could have had some, what's it called, a fight or flight response. And he flew. The question, of course, is where he went. But we really have to look at this in the moment of the relationship. And the relationship is deteriorating. Uh, 911's being called. They're arguing. Allegedly, there was a push. And... The cops were going to show up, and Tyler knew it. So the relationship reminder, relationships, number one cause of disappearances, that does not necessarily mean foul play occurred. And I got a whole list of that we've done uh, of people who have been in these exact situations. Of course, the, usually we're covering straight relationships because they're more common but we did cover at least one lesbian relationship where you could believe that the, the woman caused, actually foul play caused the other woman's disappearance. I have to tell you at this point, this is not the way uh, that I'm leaning. But moving on to learning point number two. Learning point number two, the running type. Not the running man, the running type. Not all walk-offs and runoffs. Are the same. And in fact, I have like, I've broken it down very quickly in putting this episode together, kind of three different categories where it is known, it is proven that these people either walked off or run off, ran off. Certainly, there are a lot of disappearances that we've covered where people said, for example, the husband said that the wife took off or ran off or went off with some other guy, but there's no proof of that. And I'm usually a highly uh, suspect of those stories. In this one, I'm not, of course, as uh, suspicious because of that video, whether it can be uh, seen as Tyler or not. But here are the three categories. One of the reasons the people run off uh, escaping the police and a couple of the disappearances that we've covered like that are Daniel R- Villarreal, who was eventually found deceased. And he had gotten in a couple car wrecks, had to know that the police were coming. He was on drugs. Shady guy Daniel was, and he didn't want to be around when the cops were there, so he took off. His girlfriend stayed behind, but he did not. And then another one is, in his, uh, is Brennan Smokey, who was actually getting chased by the police, he and his buddies. And he chose to run off. They stuck around uh, by the car. The police swarmed in, got them. Brennan took off never to be seen again, still missing to this day. So escaping the police, just the police are going to be there or very shortly or already there or going to be there very shortly. 
and people decide they need to get the heck out of there because they're afraid they're going to jail. Paranoia. Uh, Rashawn Francis, the disappearance in Pennsylvania, where he was obviously going through something mentally. Saying some things that didn't quite make a lot of sense. Maybe not seeing reality for what it was. And he walked off saying people were after him, although he never said any names. Another disappearance, Renee LaManna, who disappeared from her uh, sister's uh, house in, in Ocean City, New Jersey, back in the 1990s. She is still missing. She also is suffering men- from mental health problems. Took off, never to be seen again, almost 30 years ago. And then we have the, the category of what I would call getting caught doing something, meaning the cops might have not might not have been called, but these are people who were doing things, like I said, they shouldn't have been doing. One was Rouse Chapman. He was on his father's property. Father thought that he might have been doing something illegal in the, the pool house in the backyard. The father goes back to check on him, Rouse tries to cover something up. He takes off, never to be seen again. The cops were never called or anything like that, but Ralph still ran off because he thought he was going to get caught doing something by his father. No signs that he was uh, having any delusions or mental health issues. He just didn't want to get caught uh, at what he was doing. Same way with Matthew Braswell. And by the way, Ralph is still missing. Matthew Braswell... He and a buddy were uh, stealing from mailboxes, and one of the owners of the mailboxes uh, caught them doing that. And before this person ever had a chance to call the police, they tried to get out of there, wrecked the vehicle. The driver got hurt. He was caught, uh, eventually caught, uh, but Matthew Braswell took off. He was His remains were eventually found. No... Um, no chance that foul play uh, occurred. I think he was also injured in the wreck, but his injuries took a while to overtake him, and he died not too far from uh, where the truck was wrecked. But this is different than the police. The police were not on the, on the way. They were not chasing Matthew and his, uh, you know, his uh, co-conspirator and stealing from mailboxes. But they got caught doing something. They took off. Matthew went missing, and his remains were eventually found. So for Tyler's, this is technically the police. He had to know once 911 got called and and Marshall may uh, allegedly – once again, none of us were there. But Marshall is saying that Tyler pushed him. Tyler knew that the police were coming. So in my opinion, you'd have to put Tyler in with Daniel Villarreal and Brennan Smokey. My opinion. But what is also something in the statistics regarding the running off or the walk off type is it's not clear that any particular type of runoff or walk off leads more likely for the the disappearance to last. For example, even in the list uh, that I mentioned here, escaping from the police, Daniel Villarreal was found dead. Brendan Smokey still missing. Paranoia, Rashawn Francis still missing. Am- uh, missing Renee Lamana, still missing. Getting caught doing something, Rouse Chapman missing, Matthew Broswell found deceased. So we just really don't have any firm statistics on running off and what type it is. You know, What does it mean as far as bringing these kinds of disappearances to a resolution? Still somewhat unclear, but you should know it's a very common type. Of disappearance, no matter if it's escaping police paranoia, getting caught doing something, any of those, all of them are common. Not the most common type of disappearance, but they are statistically very, very significant. So you shouldn't look at Tyler's disappearance thing. Man, it's so strange. It's one of a kind. It's not. It's really not. So um, that is the running type learning point. Moving on to learning point number three. Number three, we have a lot to learn and kind of talked a little bit about this in the map section of this video. Uh, Where do I start? Uh, Once again, some of you may may be thinking Tyler Goodrich's disappearance. Oh, it's so mysterious and so unique in, in my world. As a person who does nothing but unsolved disappearances, very common. And for uh, men or women, 
to um, walk away, run away from their residence or car or their job or whatever else. It's, it's very common. It's sad. All right. I hate it. But I don't want this to all get blown out of proportion. All right. I'm here to keep a pretty good perspective on things. I do not cover disappearances because they are common. I cover them because of the damage they do to families and they do to civilizations. That's why. So where do I start with this? Well, we've had several disappearances that we've covered on Unfound where – People have gone missing in places where it doesn't seem like people would be able to go missing. Uh, Jason Landry, very well known. Uh, Luling, Texas, wrecked his car, still missing. How many years later now? Chris Sanders, also in Texas, uh, seemingly walked away from his truck, left the door open on his truck, started walking down this highway in Monahans, Texas, never to be seen again. Doesn't seem like there would have been a lot of places to hide or there's no body of water or anything still. Jason missing, Chris missing. Jamie Lee, that's a disappearance in Canada. Although there was a river nearby, it wasn't the kind of river that would sweep anybody away. He's still missing. Big question mark as to what happened uh, to him. And then of a different kind was Betty Tupfer, uh, an older woman who went missing in California. She got dropped off in downtown uh in a, in a city uh, in, in California, never to be seen again. How does an older woman who probably can't walk that far or just go missing in a city like that? And then we have one that uh, was resolved, Bo Man, which was a real head scratcher for a long time. And I have to admit when it was solved or resolved that uh, even I was stunned that here he was in Santa Monica, California, and his body was just lying there, not inside a building, but kind of in a little plaza, abandoned plaza area, and seemingly had been there the whole time, outside. Despite all his family and friends looking for him, canvassing the area, and I think homeless people seeing the body there, these things happen sometimes. For the rest of us who... Don't live like that. It's really, really, really shocking. But it happens. So what I'm saying about this is, although it seems little by little we're starting to understand more and more about disappearances that may involve involve water. We have all these um, diving companies now that are doing YouTube channels. They're going into bodies of water, finding cars, sometimes with people in them. We seem to be learning a little more and more about finding people in water. We got a long way to go about finding, <laughs> figuring out how to find people on land. It doesn't seem like we are making any progress at all, despite GPS, despite uh, drones, despite ATVs and everything else. It seems like it's as difficult as ever. And I guess what I'm saying here is I do believe that Tyler is out there somewhere in the area, as I stated in the map video. Where could he be? I, I realize that often makes people think, well, he must have gotten picked up. Something must have happened of a foul play nature. He ran into the wrong person. I'm telling you, this happens so often that although I'm certainly open to that happening once in a while, but as many times as this kind of disappearance has happened with a person going missing in an area where the, there isn't like a Mississippi River or something, it just tells me that these people who do these searches, they're well-meaning, but a lot is getting missed. So that's what I mean. We have a lot to learn. In addition, what I mean, and this is myself included, by the way. I always include myself in all of this. I'm not trying to point fingers. But where I will point a finger is that in this article that I read with this private investigator is saying, well, you must have, you might have gotten hit by a car and then. I'm not saying it's never happened, but the question I always have is why do these people always default to something that is so, so, so rare? There's much more evidence that people run off and die in the elements, whether from overdosing or suicide or something like that, than there is of somebody getting hit by a car and then somebody covering it up. 
I mean, it's like 99% of the, the former and like 1% of the latter. And I don't know why people always, so often default to the 1%. I, well, in a way, I do understand because they're saying, well, we went out there and searched and we couldn't find it. Well, then I don't know how much that really means. And so when I hear like this private investigator, I have no idea who he is. I know his name, never talked to him, never met him or anything. That he would say something like that tells me he knows nothing about disappearances. He's just throwing ideas out there just just like somebody – anybody could do on Reddit. And that's not helpful. It's not helpful. And what I would say to all of you out there who have, who are, maybe are part of a missing person's family and it, your disappearance is still unresolved, do not hire these people. Do not pay these people. Anybody who comes to you and tries to give you a, a line like this one, if you have a disappearance in your family that's like Tyler's and somebody says, well, I think he got hit by a car and somebody covered it up, block that person. <laughs> it's just the way it is. Don't talk – be kind, be nice, thank the person, but that person is not going to be able to help you. The person knows nothing about disappearances. So we have a long way to go understanding disappearances, and certainly it can start by the people who choose to get involved, understanding why and how disappearances occur. Because when they open their mouths and say something like this guy said in this particular article, all that person is proving is he doesn't know anything about disappearances. I'm not saying he's underhanded or anything. He may be very energized about finding Tyler, and that's great. But the person obviously has no uh, experience, so I really have to question if this person is really up to the task of finding Tyler. If you already have the mindset that it's some crazy – very uh, unlikely theory, then you tell me what the odds are of that person solving that disappearance. Exactly. So those are the learning points, and now I'm just going to go uh, to a little bit of analysis just using the facts that are in the public sphere as of March 25th of 2024. Here's my analysis. There is no reason to believe foul play. The way I understand this disappearance is that the timeline is too tight to believe that there was some sort of cover-up, that Tyler died in the house, and then before the police got there, uh, he got you know stuck somewhere, hidden somewhere by Marshall and some other person or whatever. That did not happen. It did not not happen. It just did not happen. In addition, we have Marshall's voice, we have Tyler's voice on that 911 call, and that kind of sets everything up in the timeline. And then how long was it after that that this person was seen on video running uh, away from the house? My idea was it wasn't too long. And this all makes sense if people are willing to allow it to make sense. It's when people just want to be so creative and treat this like a CSI episode that then things get very complicated for them. It doesn't get very complicated for me. I look at disappearances are about people, not circumstances. So I look at Tyler in a relationship headed toward divorce. Allegedly, according to Marshall, Tyler pushed Marshall. Marshall calls 911. The police are called. Tyler in that moment had to think, oh man, police are going to show up. Marshall's going to say that I pushed him. Once again, I, for the purposes of this video, I'm not saying that happened. I'm not saying that happened. All we know is it seems that Marshall was going to tell the police that Tyler pushed him. And Tyler's thinking, I'm going to get in trouble. He's already emotional, maybe blowing things out of a proportion. Who knows if he would have gotten any charges brought against him. Maybe Marshall would have... Drop the charges. They might have been able to work things out. But in the moment, at that time, let's just be honest. Nobody wants to be, to be called 911 on, right? Right. You're going to worry. And so he, he might be asked to leave the house. He's thinking about his divorce. He's thinking, 
Am I going to custody the children? Well, obviously, this 911 call might be played in court, and then Marshall might get the kids, and I might not. My life is falling apart. This is what was going on in Tyler's life right at that moment. So it's fight or flight, and given that he was a runner, I don't think that we should be surprised that Tyler's decision was to run. Shouldn't be surprised by that. Now, that might not happen. If you want to be open to the idea there was foul play, I'm not going to be able to convince you otherwise. But at least admit that given the situation, it's not crazy to believe that Tyler ran off, given what we know. So the tough part, though, about this is people have searched. Where is he? There is no, There are no facts out there to say that if – let's just say – I'm not saying I necessarily believe this, but let's just say, well – what if he was thinking about committing suicide? Well, did he bring a knife? Did he bring a gun? Did he bring a rope? Did he bring any drugs that he could have overdosed on? There's no facts supporting any of that. Maybe he did, but nothing that I've seen. But we have to be open to it. All right, No reports of any of those items, though. But something we have to consider. But we also, on the other hand, have to figure out that Figured that four and a half months later, the odds of Tyler being alive are very, very low. Now, if he was a homeless person, like we had the, the disappearance of Brandon Roberts, who ended up being alive, very thankful for that. And he had been missing for like a year and a half or even longer than that. Um, yes, I was surprised that he was still alive, but being that. He was living that very transient lifestyle. It's much more likely that he would be alive then Tyler would be alive, given that Tyler was used to living in a house, uh, living with a family, having hot food and a hot shower and the TV and the internet and everything else. For that person to automatically go living in the streets, no money, the clothes on his back and everything, tough, tough. And not to mention people are looking for him. So I don't believe that this is some sort of hiding situation. I've also not seen anything to say that he had some sort of mental health issue where he might have some sort of schizophrenia, meant, uh, bipolar disorder, lose sense of who he is and forget his name or anything like that. What really sticks out to me, though, is that although it didn't get tremendously cold that night uh, of November 3rd, uh, but it wasn't warm either. Shirts and a t uh, shirt and and shorts, and as I stated uh, in the map video, it kind of seemed like he was tiptoeing as as he was running. So could it be he was in his bare feet? And so he's out there. It's forty six degrees. I don't think I'd want to be out there in in a t shirt and shorts in forty six degrees. Now, it didn't rain or anything, but still, the cold. You would think he might have tried to make it to somewhere that might be warm. I don't know. Is there any 24 places that are open 24 hours there, like a convenience store or something? I don't know. But uh, so I think we have to be open to the idea that if he is no longer with us, that if he died, it might have had to do with the elements, some sort of hypothermia, something like that. Un unless we were to find out that, yes, he did have some sort of weapon on him, and then we'd have to go in that direction. Just think the odds of him being alive at this point, given who the way he's been described, it seems very, very, very unlikely, especially since now there are articles out there saying he necessarily wouldn't be in any trouble if he just popped up now. As far as where to look for him, I'm guessing they've done this, uh, but... <laughs> As I've, I've learned, I can never take these things for granted. Just start looking where he would usually go running and jogging. He would have probably gone to a place that was familiar to him. And if we're thinking maybe he wasn't suicidal or, or anything, he was running off and he's cold and he's going to try to get to some place that would be warm, that would be open at the time, well, what's the nearest location? And he might not have gotten there, but that might point everybody in a direction to look. And as I pointed out in the map video, this this huge park that seemed to be, what, to the northwest of where they lived? I'm, I'm guessing it has been searched already, but we know how many times searches 
fail the first time around. Unfortunately, I do not believe that uh, Tyler Goodrich is still alive. I think there's enough circumstantial evidence to say that. Of course, I hope that he is. And I certainly do not believe that foul play uh, is a factor in his disappearance. Um, but it's all very sad. Uh, two children have lost uh, their father. Of course, uh, until Tyler is found one way or the other, I think Marshall will be under suspicion. And so there's like a whole huge, very, very sad cloud hanging over all of this until Tyler's found. And I, of course, hope he's found alive today. But this could be a disappearance that goes for a while, and it might only get solved through luck. Somebody stumbling upon Tyler's remains somewhere. So that is the unfound now for the disappearance of Tyler Goodrich. And uh, please give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe to this channel. And I will talk to you again next month.